Hello everyone, welcome to my new place. This new studio is asking for some new content, so let's record it. In this episode, I would like to demonstrate how to control high frequencies in a mix and sound design with a technique called free emphasis. I already mentioned this trick several times during the videos, but this time I decided to dedicate a full episode to it. I use this trick all the time to solve the dilemma with high frequencies. The problem many producers, especially EDM producers, face sooner or later is should I boost high frequencies or not? Will it destroy the mix? The common answer is do not boost as it will destroy your mix indeed, causing unwanted clicks and noises. And this might be true. However, you can still have a cake and eat the cake too, so to speak. It is a common problem to have too many high frequency spikes. High frequency with high amplitude equals glitches and clicks, and in general, we don't want to have them. But otherwise, we may want to boost high frequencies in a balanced way in order to underline our transients or add more brightness to the mix. So, this technique allows you to have both at the same time. Let's take a look at this kick from Battery 4. It's a nice kick, but it lacks this initial transient. It could use some high frequency boost. We can easily do that with an isotope linear phase EQ. Now it's more dynamic and the click is more prominent, but we run into another problem. Namely, the very first spike of the kick Let's take a look at the oscilloscope here when I'm pointing. It's very loud, it's pretty noisy, and it will cause various issues, trigger limiter later in the mix. So we would like to tame it, but still retain its nice aggressive sound. So there are many ways to do that. One way that won't work is to try to clip this transient with a saturator like that. Well, this is exactly what I warned you about. Well, this didn't work well, because we clipped all the kick through its entire duration and it's terribly distorted. The initial transient is, however, clipped indeed, but maybe we would like somehow to apply this effect only to high frequencies and leave the body of the kick intact. And there's a way to do that. If I enable this Ableton Rack details to follow, it will only clip the initial part of the kick, reducing this aggressive spike while it doesn't have significant impact on the sound itself and the body of the kick remains intact, as we wanted. This is another example, a stock plug preset from Serum, unedited, no effects, nothing but just the raw preset. You can see on the oscilloscope and also you can clearly hear that it has this very sharp transients at the beginning. Very noisy clicks, and this is common for many plugs and leads in general. So let's try to enable our mysterious Ableton rack. The clicks are gone. Otherwise, the sound is unaffected but cleaner. You can hear that easily, but also observe that in the oscilloscope. Transits are preserved, but they are much easier on our ear. Now onto our mysterious Ableton effect track. I called it Preemphasis Shelf, and the idea for it came from two places. First of all, there is excellent Dan Warla's tutorial on the internet that explains the Preemphasis idea in general, but it doesn't answer the basic question on how to use it to achieve the best results. This comes from elsewhere, namely, from a one-man company, Loop Trotter, who creates these nice little yellow fan boxes that includes saturation. And in fact, he mentioned that he 
boosts the high frequency before saturator in order to clean up the high end. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, so let's try to reconstruct the rack. Starting with saturator, as I mentioned. With, you can use any saturator, but I used the stock one with medium curve. And adjust the gain so that it more or less retains the same level in, on input and output. Let's map drive to macro and output to macro so you can control it easily. The output goes from 0 to minus 36. And I would like to have minus 6 dB on output related to input, so that would be 30 minus 6 and 0. Let's hear how does it sound. When bypass this is almost inaudible. Just watch this meter here. If the level exceeds the threshold, the saturation occurs. If we drive the saturator higher, the sound is completely trashed. But that's only simple saturation. What's more important here is the EQ. The Ableton Live EQ8 is symmetric, which means if we boost and cut both sides by the same amount, it will be neutral to the sound if it's bypassed. It only will be affected by non-linear plugging, which is saturation here. But otherwise, it will be transparent. But of course, we need to make the, this boost shelf symmetric. So how can we achieve that? Let's map the gain from both equalizers to same knob. But the first one will be boosting it and the other one will be reducing it by the same amount. Like that. So their frequency is heavily boosted before it hits the saturator. Watch the meter. So now only high frequencies are saturated. We need to do the same for frequency in order to have perfect symmetric shell. Let's say from 1000 to 10,000 Hz. Just values for your plugin of choice. When it comes to equalizer, it's very simple because they should all be similar. Some analog model plugins may not have this possibility to be perfectly symmetrical. When it comes to saturation, well, you need to consult your plugins manual if you are using something exotic. But it's mostly not necessary. I achieve quite nice results with stock Ableton plugin. This is our free emphasis shelf. I usually set it to about 2 to 4 kHz in order to clip, soft clip, only this region of high frequencies above the shelf. Here is a more practical example. This is a typical old school trance ARP. It has extreme distortion. 
in our fold. Very weird wave tables and constantly modulating spectrum with band pass, so it's very difficult to equalize. And it's also pretty harsh to begin with. Let's enable equalizer now to boost high frequencies by a lot, as you can see. And it causes these occasional high frequency spikes. But we can easily tame it by enabling frame phases shelf. Now, no matter what happens with the ARP, the frequency and amplitude doesn't exceed some set level. And it's not that harsh anymore in, at extremes. While in lower frequencies it just sounds all the same as it used to. So otherwise it would be very difficult to equalize properly or mix properly. But using this technique you can control even very harsh sounds, which are common for EDM. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you found this secret technique useful and will find its use for your own mixes. If you don't want to reconstruct it, the Ableton rack will be available for download below the video. Just get it, and if you want to see more content like that, hit like and subscribe. See you.